Hello. In this video, we'll be looking at the predicted phenotype traits and GD match results, and you know, analyzing the raw DNA file basically of a Neanderthal woman from Slovenia who lived in Europe 50,000 years ago before the Homo sapiens have uh, made their way into Europe. Uh, this is what she looked like with my Nasha Kot tool. She's predicted to have dark brown eyes, snub shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, but Nasha Kot does not predict skin color, so for skin color, I had to turn to Snipper Free. Uh, according to Snipper Free, she was most likely black skinned. However, you know, I was a little bit biased. I didn't want to de depict a Neanderthal looking like a black person, so I made her brown skinned inst instead of black. Uh, for eye color, Snipper Free predicted her to have brown eyes, same as Nashakot. And for uh, hair color, Snipper Free predicted her to have black hair, same as Nashakot. Uh, now, YSEC did not give her an eye color prediction because she was not genotyped for the main variant in BEH2. And, you know, YSEC is not capable of imputing genotypes, so YSEC just left that part out. This is her genotype in DRD2. What's interesting is she did not have the no-go learner mutation that most Europeans have. I actually don't have it either, and I'm a European, but it's just interesting that all of these ancient genomes from Europe are not scoring, are not getting this uh, mutation. But uh, this is another very interesting variant in DRD2, and here uh, she's got A1A1. This is also in DRD2, and this one has to do with tardive dyskinesia and uh, dopamine D2 receptors in the brain. Uh, it's a very rare, incredibly rare genotype for modern people, for Europeans or East Asians or anybody else. So I'm thinking maybe uh, maybe this, the presence of this genotype in modern humans and modern Homo sapiens might indicate some kind of a Neanderthal admixture. I'm not sure. The A1 genotype basically decreases the amount of D2 dopamine receptors in the brain, which has all kinds of complica which leads to all kinds of um, complications within like functioning, motivation. Uh, it can even contribute to Parkinson's. So it's interesting that this uh, Neanderthal individual has this super rare genotype. When it comes to Comte's uh, Val Met uh, variant, she is Val Val, which means warrior. Uh, this is a typical genotype for every human, you know, for every human besides Europeans, actually, because Europeans tend to have warrior with the IE here. Now, the implications of the warrior with the IO genotype is that uh, she had quicker do uh, reuptake of dopamine, which means less dopamine in the system at all times, uh, which means less motivation, attention, problems with motivation and attention, however, better stress resiliency. She did not have derived EDAR. So remember, like, all the way back when I was talking about appearance, uh, if you look at the picture, I depicted her looking Caucasoid or basically not East Asian, and this is because she did not have derived EDAR, which is a gene implicated in East Asian facial features. And she did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is like, you know, duh, obviously she didn't, because this mutation came about, like, thousands of years after this individual died. When it comes to polygenic diseases, everything is looking very good for her. She has a very low risk score for Crohn's disease. She has a pretty low risk score for bipolar disorder, definitely below average. She has a very low risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, she also has a very low risk score for coronary heart disease. And on top of that, she has a very low risk score, very low risk score for type 2 diabetes. This is what she scores with MDLPK11. Interestingly, she's not scoring any European. Uh, that's because this ca the European categories here represent modern European drift, and this is an ancient individual from Europe, not a modern individual. With the Oracle, she's closest to Denisovans and Neanderthals, which is like very typical, uh, very typical result for Denisovans and Neanderthals, Neanderthals, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of Neanderthal plus ancient. Australian or Denisova plus ancient Australian. I'm guessing that it's typical for Neanderthals and Denisovans to just score 100% African here. And uh, this is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. What's interesting here is that she's actually scoring 4.5% Baltic. Very surprising result because uh, the Baltic category here is based on modern Northern Europeans from the Baltic area. Uh, the allele frequencies are basically the allele frequencies of modern Northern Europeans from the Baltic area. And she's scoring 4% of this modern Northern European category. So she's quite, um, quite shifted towards modern Northern Europeans. And uh, this is her result with Eurogenes K13, uh, K36, but I can't explain to you why, but every Neanderthal and Denisovan genome that you can look at, and I have um, two Neanderthal genomes on my computer and one Denisovan genome, and they all score mostly pygmy with this calculator. Why do they score mostly pygmy? I don't know. Pygmies are, to my understanding, a group in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. They're very short, so maybe they're most similar in terms of uh, autosomal DNA to what Neanderthals were like. This is what she scores with MDLPK16. And I noticed that every Neanderthal and Denisovan genome scores mostly ancestor here. So I'm thinking that maybe the ancestor 
group on this calculator was meant to represent specifically Neanderthals and Denisovans. But what's very interesting, what you're going to see from the oracle that's coming up right now, is that uh, it's actually closest to groups in Africa, which also tend to score ancestors. So why do these groups in Africa, why do these sub-Saharan Africans score uh, a component that's meant to represent Neanderthals and Denisovans in Europe? And with the uh, DNA LK12 ancient, she's mostly scoring South African HG, which is obviously by the name, uh, you can tell it's meant to represent the uh, dominant component in South African hunter-gatherers. So why is this component that's meant to represent South African hunter-gatherers the biggest component that a Neanderthal that's from Europe is scoring? So clearly, this Neanderthal from Europe had some uh, affinities, some kind of closeness, some artificial similarity to Sub-Saharan African groups. Here is her result with Ancient Eurasia K6, and you can see she's also scoring uh, mostly Sub-Saharan African, but there is that 9% West European hunter-gatherer, so she actually had some like modern Northern European genetic drift. And this is what she scores with uh, Gidrosia K3. It's no secret to anybody that uh, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and other archaic hominids are closest to Sub-Saharan Africans out of all human populations today. However, what's maybe a little bit surprising and what's actually quite interesting is that she's scoring 14% West Eurasian. That's a lot. That's a lot of West Eurasian drift that she already had. Um, maybe this is because like a, this is a later Neanderthal. There's Neanderthals who existed like in the middle Paleolithic, but this is from an upper Paleolithic. So maybe this is a little bit of a later Neanderthal and that's why she had some modern European drift. And uh, this is what she scores with Ephio Helix K10, which is a calculator specifically designed for Sub-Saharan Africans. Uh, I found this to be the most appropriate calculator for her because she's clearly most similar to Sub-Saharan Africans in terms of autosomal DNA. And what's surprising, what's interesting, is she's scoring mostly Hoi San here, which is, by the way, very atypical. It's like very atypical for Sub-Saharan Africans to score this much Hoi San. If you look at the Oracle, which I'm not including in this video, but you can download the file and run it through GGmatch and see the Oracle for yourself, it's very... The distances to every modern African group are very high. So this Hoi-san component, it's kind of sus. I'm not sure why Neanderthal is scoring mostly Hoi-san here. Anyway, thank you guys for watching until the end of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And you can download this sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Goodbye.